Hello, people of God. Welcome to the Let's Keep Our Education Catholic Podcast. I am Sister Augustina Butter. My apologies for not having uploaded episodes for a couple of months now. And thanks to those who reached out, you know, to inquire about the reasons. I am back now and I hope we can make it as interactive as possible. In the last episode, I discussed the second essential mark of a Catholic school, according to Archbishop Michael Miller. Today, I'll be talking about the third essential mark, animated by communion and community. The emphasis here is on community of persons, where Catholic faith, Catholic identity is lived out. It's more on the internal Catholic identity, which is the implicit Catholic identity. And Archbishop Michael Miller describes this from four lenses. One, the teamwork among members of the Catholic school. Two, the cooperation between educators and the bishop. Third, the interaction that exists between students and teachers. And finally, the school's physical environment. Looking at it from the perspective of teamwork among Catholic school members, you know, educators should be able to develop a more intentional willingness to collaborate and be committed to it. And this is teamwork among administrators, between administrators and teachers, between teachers and teachers, and with parents. So for an effective Cali school, teamwork is not optional. And you know, the greatest source that educators have is other educators. Therefore, working in isolation is not the best option and is usually ineffective. The second one, the cooperation between educators and the bishop. It is assumed that in Cali schools, there should be an ecclesial communion between bishops and Cali school educators because bishops are the proprietors of most Cali schools. So both the bishops and educators have the responsibility to support and accompany each other. And such a relationship, you know, should be marked by mutual trust, continued dialogue, respect, understanding, and love. You know, when you own something, you have to take care of it, nurture it, and provide all the resources, you know, possible for it to blossom. So bishops and their representatives in Cali schools, you know, these representatives include the diocesan education director and all the secretaries, right? They have the responsibility to work together to understand the school's current nature, their strengths and areas of challenge. And the supervision should be very objective and without bias and prejudice. That is applying the principle of phenomenological epoche. And to strengthen the cooperation, I think it is important that the bishops make physical visit to the school in a timely manner. You know, there are some Catholic educators who have invested part of their lives and funds of knowledge in Catholic schools, but they have never seen the proprietor or proprietaries of their school in person. This is also applicable to religious congregations, religious orders that establish and run Catholic schools their superior general should be able to make a physical visit to their schools and some of these visits you know could be advanced into meetings where you have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with these educators you know that you use the opportunity to understand them you know know their strengths and their areas of challenges where you can be of help the third one the interaction that exists between students and teachers. The Catholic philosophy of education ensures a whole child development, and such growth requires the personalized accompanying of a teacher. So to strengthen that interaction, teachers, educators should be able to build empathy and understanding. You know, children are different and they are diverse in many ways. They experience different challenges, life situations, and so on. We see all of this. We know it. We watch them on TV. We read them on papers, on newspapers, on books. We know all of this. And sadly, we cannot protect our kids, you know, from the realities of a broken world. 
but it is important to talk about it. You as an educator, as a teacher, do not ignore it. Invite conversation and provide honest answers. Even when you don't have the best answer, right? Create a positive environment where these students will feel welcome. And then for you to understand them, focus on knowing your students and support them to know themselves. When you do this, love and education will embrace in such an environment. The last aspect, according to Archbishop Michael Miller on building community in Cali School, is the physical environment. I think I've talked about the importance of a conducive school environment in one of my episodes. So the school's physical environment is also an integral element, you know, that embodies the Catholic community of Christian values. So the environment ought to be conducive enough for learning to happen. For instance, I remember during one of my researches in Nigeria last summer, I saw how dilapidated some Cali school buildings and environments are. Who functions in a dirty environment? How could you even expect a child or even teachers to become effective in such situations? And in some worst case scenarios, some principals and managers or some of these schools are not even perturbed. And of course, kudos to some who are really making good efforts you know, to change the situation. I think this part of the physical environment is also one of the reasons the visit of the bishops and superiors, you know, is really highly needed. Sometimes you must move away from using delegates and do the visit yourself. It has a way of validating the school community as worth of your precious time and effort. Students, faculty, staff, parents and the larger community, they notice our actions. Yes, they do. And such actions could have a very significant positive impact. So these are some of the different ways we could build a community in Cali schools. A community we have through love, faith and academics will interact. God bless you for listening and let's continue to keep our education Cali.